Hi, my name is Ted Burke, and I'm a registered Republican living here in South Jersey. Over the past three years, I've watched in horror as Donald Trump and his compliant Republican enablers have systematically dashed all of my hopes and expectations. I wanted business-like efficiency and problem solving. I got the lazy, jingoistic rantings of a malignant narcissist. I wanted immigration reform, and I got children in cages and a Muslim ban. I got a blustering insistence on the building of an ineffective and impractical wall. The only wall that exists now is the wall that the rest of the world has built to keep us out. I wanted sensible engagement on gun control and police misconduct and tolerance. I got Charlottesville and George Floyd and secret federal squads and a constantly unceasingly racist dog whistle from the White House. I wanted sensible measured attention to climate change and I got climate denial and a crazy unjustifiably abrupt exit from the Paris Accord. I wanted conscious and conservative judges and I got Brett Kavanaugh. I wanted law and order and I got an administration replete with felons and lawbreakers, including the president himself. I expected that my president and his administration would marshal the resources to develop a strategy to combat the deadly pandemic. Instead, I got a president who progressed from denying its existence, calling it a liberal hoax, to recommending dangerously uninformed remedies. The virus rages on as Trump dithers about blaming China and discouraging increasing testing because, quote, then we'll get more cases. This is the logic of the president of the United States. We should test less so that he can look better. As the death toll nears 200,000, Donald Trump still has no definitive strategy regarding masks, social distancing, or any comprehensive response to the plague. Where convenient, he blames others, China, Democratic governors, whoever. At one point, he tried blaming Obama. I asked my Republican friends, dear God, when can we stop talking about Hillary and Obama? This is our watch. The current unrest, the distrust, and the death toll, sadly and tragically, belong to us. My Republican Congress people have been the worst offenders of all. Donald Trump doesn't know any better. His moral compass was broken long ago. Sadly, he has smashed the compass of people to whom the nation looks for adult supervision of that child in the White House. When they had a chance to rebuke him, to unmask him, to hold him in check, which is their constitutional responsibility, they knuckled under to Trump like a middle schooler who wants to remain at the cool lunch table. When faced with clear, incontrovertible evidence of wrongdoing in the Mueller report, in the Ukraine matter, every Republican legislator except one looked the other way to save themselves from that withering Twitter storm that would certainly ensue from the grade school bully in the Oval Office. Shame on them. Now, many of my Republican friends and neighbors will say that I've been swayed by the liberal media. I say nonsense. I don't get my information from Rachel Maddow or Anderson Cooper any more than I do from Sean Hannity or Tucker Carlson. I listen to Donald Trump. I hear the lies, the distortions, the misinformation. I hear the vitriolic poison that comes directly from his mouth. I don't need any pundit to tell me what to believe. I read the Mueller report. I read this so-called Ukraine transcript. The president counts on the fact that most hardworking people don't have the time or the inclination to wade through these reports. Well, I do. And I can tell you that they're shocking and they're damning to the extreme. I didn't want Trump to be a failure. I'm certainly no fan of Hillary. I didn't want my party to disintegrate into a snake pit of sniveling sycophants 
but here we are. I'm a Republican largely because I'm a Catholic. And as a Catholic, I oppose abortion. I am, as they say, pro-life. The lives of the unborn matter to me. I also believe that black lives matter. Police lives matter. Innocent gun violence victims' lives matter. Those vulnerable to the COVID matter. All lives matter. America matters. This nation cannot come together and solve its problems until that cancerous tumor and its sustaining organisms in Washington are removed. Listen, I disagree with Joe Biden on several important issues. I'm concerned about the economic and destabilizing impact that some liberal democratic policies could have on our nation. I believe that Joe is a moderate. I hope and I believe that he'll be a stabilizing buffer against the unhelpful leanings of the far left. But these concerns pale in comparison to the urgency of removing this carcinogen in the White House. Joe Biden is decent. Joe Biden is competent. We can argue about the rest another day. I'm with Joe.